Today we're doing areas in the plane. We're going to find the area between two curves from x equals a to x equals b. Let's talk about what this area represents. First, if we're finding the area of the region between f and g, so here I have f, then I have g between a and b, it would be the antiderivative of f of x minus g of x from a to b. And what we're doing here is we're finding the area underneath f, so underneath all of f, and then subtracting out the area underneath g, and that will give you the remaining area in between the two curves. Another way to look at it is if we have a representative rectangle of height f of x1 minus g of x1 with width delta x, and you could add up all those rectangles. So the area between curves if f and g are continuous with f of x greater than or equal to g of x throughout the interval a, b, then the area between the curves y equals f of x and y equals g of x from a to b is the integral of f minus g from a to b, represented here. So this is when we do this, it's top curve minus bottom curve. So let's go ahead and look at this first example. Find the area of the region bounded by y equals cosine x and y equals sine x and x equals zero. So first we need to do, we know that it starts at zero and then it goes to this intersection point. So what is that first intersection point that we have there? And hopefully you guys are thinking, where is cosine x and sine x first equal to each other after zero? And that intersection is at x equals four or pi over four, I mean. So my integral is gonna be from zero to pi over four. Of my top curve is cosine x, my bottom curve is sine x. So it will be from cosine x minus sine x dx. The antiderivative of cosine x is sine x and the antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x so that would become plus cosine x and this is from zero to pi over four sine of pi over four is square root of two over two plus cosine of pi over four is square root of two over two minus sine of zero which is zero and cosine of zero which is one this would be the square root of two minus one would be the area bounded by cosine x and sine x. Let's look at the next one. The area enclosed by the region of the parabola y equals x squared minus one and y equals x plus one. So again, we're going top from bottom. So the top one's the line, the bottom one is the parabola. But we first need to find our points of intersection. So we need to find this point of intersection here and this point of intersection here, what those values are. So what we do is we take and set our equations equal to each other, our y's. So we'd have x squared minus one equals x plus one. Solve that get it equal to zero, and I'd have x squared minus x minus two equals zero. And then what factors of negative two add up to negative one? You should have x minus two, x plus one equals zero. So I have x values of two and negative one. So they intersect at negative one and two. So when I set this up, negative one to two, it's going to be my top curve, which is the line, so that would be x plus one minus my bottom curve, which is the parabola, which is x squared minus one dx. Then before I take the antiderivative, I'm gonna add like terms. And I would have negative x squared plus x plus two. And now I can take my antiderivative and I'd have negative x cubed over three plus x squared over two plus two x from negative one to two. Go ahead and plug those in and you get negative eight thirds plus two plus four 
minus one third plus one half minus two or negative one third plus one half minus two. Add those together and you should get 27 over six, which reduces to nine halves. Let's go ahead and look at our first quick quiz. The area of the region enclosed by the graph of y equals x squared plus 2 and the line y equals 6. So the first thing you want to do is you want to visualize this curve. So this would be the line y equals 6. And this would be the line y equals x squared plus 2. So it's plus 2. So we're off just a little bit. Forget to move it up to. So we're finding the region enclosed by this. So it would be this region here. So go ahead, take a moment, try to do that on your own. And then we will find the answer. So you should know your points of intersection are negative 2 and 2. And this would be 6 minus x squared minus 2 dx. I distributed that negative. Now, I'm going to rewrite this. This is symmetric about the y-axis, and instead of having to plug in a negative, I really like being able to plug in zeros. So I'm going to rewrite this 2 from 0 to 2 of 6 minus x squared minus 2 dx. So now, when I find my antiderivative, it's somewhat easier to do. Um, the last thing you can do also is this could be negative x squared minus or plus 4. And then I would have 2 times negative x cubed over 3 plus 4x from 0 to 2. And when you go through and get that, you should get 32 thirds. Next, we're going to look at integrating with respect to y. If the boundaries of a region are more easily described by functions of y, use horizontal approximation rectangles for regions like these. So this is when we would have right curve minus left curve. So we would be using the same would be integrated, but it would all be with respect to y. And it would be our right curve minus our left curve. So this is known as right curve minus a left curve. So this would be your right curve minus your left curve. So right curve minus left curve. So let's look at example three. Find the area of the region bounded by the curves x equals y squared minus 1 and y equals x plus 1. So this is going to be our right minus left, don't forget. But when we have this, it has to be in terms of y. And right now, this equation, the second one, is in terms of x. So I need to solve for x and get x equals y minus 1. So now I have my two equations. So this is our right curve, which is the line, minus our left curve, which is the parabola. So that would be the order. And what we first need to do is we need to find our points of intersection. So we would take y squared minus 1 and set it equal to y minus 1. When we solve for that, we get y squared minus y equals 0. Factor out our y, and you get our point of intersections of y equals 0 and y equals 1. Now remember, these are the y values. This is all in terms of y. So it's y equals 0, y equals 1. So 
I would go ahead and set this up. This would be from zero to one. It's my right curve, which is my line, which is y minus one, minus my left curve, which is y squared minus one. And it's in terms of y, so I'd have dy. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this and have y minus y squared. Because I have y, negative 1, minus a negative 1 is 0, so it would be negative y squared dy. Going through, I'd have y squared over 2, minus y cubed over 3, from 0 to 1. This would equal 1 half minus 1 third, which is 1 6. Because we don't have to plug 0 in because you just get 0, so I'm only plugging 1 in. Let's go ahead and look at example four. Um, find the area of the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals the square root of x plus one and y equals x minus one in the x-axis. So first of all, these are both, we want to find this as right minus left. So we're gonna do right minus left for this one. So my right is my line, but I need to get that line in terms of y and not in terms of x and that would give me x equals y plus 1. And then I also need to do the same for here. I need to solve for x. So first I'd square both sides, and then I'd subtract 1. So that would give me y squared minus 1 equals x. So looking at this, we need to find this y value, which it looks like it's 0, and then I also need to find this y value. So we need to set our equations equal to each other and solve again to find those points of intersection. So y squared minus 1 equals y plus 1. I would have y squared minus y minus 2 equals 0. Factor in that, what factors in negative 2 add up to negative 1? It would be y minus 2 times y plus 1 equals 0. So I'd have y equals 2 and negative 1. However, we only want the part from zero up because it's all positive, so I would not be including negative one for this problem. So this would go from a y value of two, zero to two. And remember, this is right minus left. My right curve is my line. So my line is y plus one minus my left curve, which is my parabola, which is y squared minus one. This I can simplify before taking the antiderivative, add like terms, and I would get negative y squared plus y plus 2. This would be negative y cubed over 3 plus y squared over 2 plus 2y from 0 to 2. When I plug 0 in, I would get 0 for all of them. So I just have to plug 2 in, I get negative 8 thirds plus 2 plus 4, which equals 10 thirds. Example 5, find the area of the region bounded by the graphs of x equals 3 minus y squared and x equals y plus 1. Well, it's already in terms of y for us, so we don't need to solve for either of those. Um, remember, this is right to left, so it's parabola minus line. Um, and we do need to find our points of intersection. So I have to take 3 minus y squared equals y plus 1 and solve for that. I'd end up having 0 equals y squared plus y minus 2 and I have zero equals y plus two times y minus one because the factors are negative two that add up to positive one are positive two and negative one. So I'd have y equals negative two and one. So that looks about right, negative two and then one. So this would be from negative two to one of my parabola minus my line. So three minus y squared minus y plus 1. I'm going to um, simplify this. I'm going to add my constants together before I take the antiderivative. 
So I would have negative y squared minus y plus 2 dy And when I take the antiderivative of this, I get negative y cubed over 3 minus y squared over 2 plus 2y from negative 2 to 1. And that ends up being 4.5. And you can go in your calculator and put your um, finite integral in there, um, and you'll get 4.5. This is as far as you need to go, and then you can go ahead and get the answer unless otherwise told. Let's look at example six. Curves that intersect at more than two points. Find the area of the region between the graphs of f of x and g of x. So here, f of x is my cubic, so that's the one that is pink, and g of x is my parabola because it's um, quadratic, so that's the one in blue. So we're gonna have two separate integrals for one area and the other because your top and bottom interchange. But the first thing with this, like any other one, we need to find these three points of intersection. Okay, so we need to set these equal to each other and find those points of intersection first. So I have 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x ma equals negative x squared plus 2x. I'm going to add x squared to both sides and subtract 2x and I end up getting 3x cubed minus 12x equals 0. Factor out of 3x. I have x squared minus 4 equals 0, so I have x equals 0 and plus or minus 2. So this would be my negative 2, 0, positive 2 for my x values. Go ahead and set this up. From negative 2 to 0, it's my quad... Um, my cubic is on top, so that would be f of x minus g of x, my parabola, dx, plus the other one from 0 to 2. Now it's my parabola on top, so it would be g of x minus f of x, since the cubic is on bottom. So going through doing this, I want you guys to try this one on your own and showing your work, you should get 24 as your answer. In our last quick quiz, in your notes, double check if you print it out that this is for sine x. So it says, what is the area of the region in the first quadrant enclosed by the graphs of y equals 4 sine x and y equals x? So the first thing with this, th these are all decimal approximations, so you're going to use your calculator. So find the point of intersections, and it's the first quadrant. Set it up. Use your calculator. So the point of intersection was x equals 2.475 to three decimal places. So this would be 0 to 2.475 of sine x minus x dx. And when you go ahead and put that in your calculator, you would get 4.081 to three decimal places. So it should have been letter C.